This really could revolutionise the way that we look at extinction. This is an enormous advancement for biotechnology as a whole. So you're wondering what it means to be an extinctable? Yes. yes. Wonder no more. Melbourne Uni has teamed up with US genetic engineering company Colossal Biosciences in a $15 million bid to resurrect our only apex marsupial predator. Now with all of these resources, we have a real chance of making this a reality. First, I'll need a common household item. Yeah, it's not quite that simple. Here's how they're going to do it. Currently, scientists have sequenced 95% of the thylacine genome. Once that hits 100%, they'll combine those genes with the tiger's closest living relative, the fat-tailed dunnut. Yes, it's a thing. Then that DNA goes into a stem cell, becoming an embryo that's then raised in a lab as the only living example of its species. No pressure. We've already sequenced the genome of a juvenile Tasmanian tiger, but there's still a lot of work we need to do to fill in some of the gaps. I'm not sure how I feel about them sort of bringing something back. It's a bit Jurassic Park, isn't it? Yeah, why not? They're pretty cute. I think they'd be nice to see in Tasmania if you went there for a holiday. There were just 5,000 thylacines left in Tassie when Europeans arrived. They were quickly wiped out through hunting and habitat destruction, the last known tiger dying in a Hobart Zoo in 1936. If this team successfully creates a living, breathing thylacine, it could have huge implications for other species. I'm thinking mammoths tearing up the tundra. He doesn't want to see a mammoth, right? Dodos retaking the skies. Okay. So is it possible to bring the tiger back from the dead? And how long is it going to take? Well, Professor Andrew Pask heads up the Tasmanian Tiger Project at Melbourne Uni, and he joins us now. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So every three or four years, someone tries to do this. Yep. What is the obsession? I think it was just such an incredibly unique animal. It's this, you know, dog-like marsupial. It had a pouch, had joeys in its pouch. And I think it's also this absolutely tragic story of extinction that we're all so familiar with. We can see that black and white footage of the last animal walking around that cage in Tasmania. It's something so real and tangible, I think, for Australians. And it's such a, a terrible story of how we wipe this, this animal off the face of the earth. So how, how long do you think this will take this, this time? We're hoping that within a decade we'll be at the point of having... That, that sort of early embryo stage that we're looking at turning into a whole living animal to bring back. Good, good idea that it's a whole animal. I mean, half an animal would be <laughs> all right. <True>. Um, <laughs> but Sorry. for this to work, don't you need two? You do. So we wouldn't bring back just one. We would bring back many. Many? Is, yeah, many. How many? <laughs> well, you know, I think you'd have to bring back a, a decent number, maybe 20 or 30 or so, to have enough genetic diversity to make sure that you had a really healthy population because you need to be able to... What the ultimate goal would be would be to restore these animals back into the wild. Now, I, I got on the phone today, as I do, to fill up all the stories, <laughs> and I, I heard from one scientist who says this is fairy tale science, yeah. uh, that it's, good, it's a good media story, but it's never going to happen. OK? Did, did we take the bait? Yeah, well, yeah, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but this, you know, I think, you know, 10 years ago, even maybe five years ago, this really was beyond the realm of what we, we could do. But there's been huge advances in the way that we can get DNA and read DNA, particularly from really old animals, ancient specimens and things, as well as new technologies in DNA editing, which make this possible. But the other thing that really makes this possible now is having a huge investment in doing this work. A lot of it is just pure science grunt work that has to be done. And we need a huge amount of people working in unison to try and make this happen. And so we've had this incredible investment from uh, a US company. We had a philanthropist, an Australian philanthropist earlier this year, give us $5 million to kick this project off as well. And now we've really got that critical mass, that team of people, all working towards this one goal of trying to bring the, the Tassie Tiger back. And I back. also believe that the Hemsworths have invested in this. Is that their ploy? To, are they you know, are there going to be more Hemsworths? Are you gonna, <laughs> <laughs> how many Hemsworths are you looking at? That probably would be. This is all an elaborate ruse just to yeah. get the Hemsworths down yeah. so we can <laughs> clone more Ten of tigers, them. Ten tigers, yeah. 20 Hemsworths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, That's good. We, we saw that the company that you're working with is also looking to potentially bring the woolly mammoth back. Yep. Now, I've seen Jurassic Park. <laughs> this is not a good idea from what it says in the movie. Is it a good idea to be bringing back animals like the woolly mammoth? 
Well, so the woolly mammoth won't eat us, right? So it's not got a T-Rex mouth, not a carnivore, which is But good. it's covered in wool and it's stinking hot these days because <laughs> we've ruined the planet. Yeah, you definitely would have to think about where you put that animal back, but they actually played a really important role in, in climate on the globe. So they actually help keep the tundra more frozen by punching holes in the tundra as they walk across it and it actually helps that ground freeze more. And the thawing of the tundra is something that's happening in the globe right now and it's contributing to global warming. So there is a whole work, you know, body of evidence out there to suggest if you could bring back a, a big herd of, of mammoths that they would actually help reduce global temperatures. Are you scared? Oh. No, it's like snuffle up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, fascinating times, Andrew. Can't, yeah, wait to keep an eye on it and see how you go. Put, yeah. it, in, put it in the diary, 10 years' time. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Would you please thank Andrew? Thank you.